Hey, what's happening right now? You are listening to the Victory Loves Company podcast. I'm Conrad Agderian, and today is Monday, May 21st, 2018. And my next guest is a very good friend of mine, Jack Bermio, owner and operator of LJ Productions, a full service DJ and entertainment company. Jack is also a DJ, MC, and stylist. He has an unrivaled ability to take people's visions and make them come to life. He's also an expert event coordinator, visual director, and entertainer. His professionalism, style, and attention to detail has led him to host celebrity events with high profile clientele such as Betsy Johnson and Donald Trump. But Jack has also created a name for himself for a proposal that went viral. And it was also recognized by the real daytime talk show as having the world's greatest proposal to which Jack got married on national television. So without further ado, let me introduce three-time DJ Times Magazine DJ of the Year, Jack Romeo. Hey. Jack, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you for having me. I'm All right. I'm excited. I, I really sound magnificent on this microphone. I mean, yeah. well, you have a Well, you have a sexy voice to begin with, so. Thank you. That's what my boyfriend says. Yeah? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on, man? How's Nothing. Bu- how's business? Yeah, extremely well. Blessed. We're very happy. We're surprised how January, February, how 2018 took off. So we're very ecstatic. So even more ecstatic just recently because we're debuting a few new products that we have here. That's going to add to our fleet of uh, packages. Okay. Speaking of packages, how do you feel about the uh, masturbation epidemic that's taken the nation by storm? It was quite concerning because I thought my dad had a lot to do with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Firing off knuckle children? Oh, yeah. I'm surprised I don't have any other brothers and sisters out there that I know of. <laughs> so, he's, he's, he's quite a handful. <laughs> how, how many... <laughs> Yeah, how many, and girlfriends are cannibals, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. So, for the small percentage of people that don't know who you are in in this industry, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, well, I am a owner operator of uh, LJ DJs. Uh, company is a full time event production entertainment company, and we are, uh, I would say, event design in entertainment because. The entertainment style that we have, we do a lot of event design within that aspect. We really don't kind of reach past the, the dance floor. It's really more catered to what your guests are, are seeing and experience. So it's, everything's like kind of centered. Um, we've been running business uh, for well over 24 years or something like that. I started when I was 15. Nice. You know? So if I take you back a little bit, uh, I was a DJ, 15 years old. Um, grinding, I was DJ Lojack. That's kind of where the LJ came about, and then DJ uh, Lojack. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I was delivering pizza with a Honda Accord, you know, at 16, 17 when you get your license and uh-huh. stuff like that. And I had everything in it, man. I had a VC, uh, VCR, yeah, in wow. the car. I had five TVs like on the on the on the windshield. It was just crazy, bizarre stuff. But I didn't have a Lojack, you know, and I was just kind of an inspiring DJ because my dad was a DJ himself, a Latin DJ. Okay. And uh, well, you're Latin yourself. I'm just I am. Okay. I'm Colombian and Ecuadorable is what they say. Colombian and Ecuadorable. Yeah, yeah. I got. I'm, I'm two both worlds. You know, I do have the whitest name in America, Jack. <laughs> but can you imagine your parents calling you Yak for like forever, yelling at you? And I'm like, what the fuck is Yak? Like, are you are, like Yak me? Like, my mom couldn't even say Jack. Why would you name me Jack from the from the beginning? So. Um, well, that was a cool story how I got my name too. So, so yeah, I was uh, I was a club DJ. Like I was an inspiring DJ. So I was like low jack for a few years, and then uh, I I started kind of transforming into a DJ uh, at sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and uh, I decided to create a low jack production. You know, and I, again, production was the coolest thing to say back then. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, a few DJ companies folded, and I was just their DJ. I was never an MC, and then. Um, Eventually, I took on their clientele, and I had to kind of man up. I had to mature the fuck up right away. And I decided How old were you? I was at 18, even at 20, I think. I had a good two-year window right there where I was collecting other DJs' business that they passed down to me because I was only a DJ. I was their DJ, and they, they believed in me. They thought I can actually continue their legacy, keeping their clients uh, content and happy with just DJing in general. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was I was really flooded with a lot of work, and I was very blessed at that time, but I had no idea where my life was going because I was still going to school for hotel restaurant management and French culinary, which, by the way, I got two associates. So, you know, this boy could cook and eat. So I was a little overwhelmed, and I had to f- figure out something at 2021 20, where I actually had to MC. I actually had to talk on the microphone. And long story short, when I took the first Sweet 16, I actually 
became an MC. I, I spoke on the microphone. I, 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 I had to quickly learn how to direct, and I was nervous as shit. I'll tell you that. And so you, so you weren't behind. You weren't in front of the microphone this entire time. You were behind the uh, the mixer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I never knew how to talk on a microphone, and um, so yeah, when I worked on this microphone skill thing at twenty one. That one sweet sixteen brought in six parties. I'm like, holy shit! This wow. is, this is what a mic does. Mm-hmm. This is by the way, your mic is actually, is amazing. I really sound. Oh, thank you. I, I'm turning myself on just talking onto this mic. All right. Well, you know, we'll hit pause if you want. You know, and then we, <laughs> we could have a moment of ourselves. <laughs> one yes. pump chump, and then we can come back in 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so yeah. So then, lo- long and behold, um, I, I I built up a bigger market for myself at the same time going to school and things like that. So by uh, 24 we we converted to uh, lj productions because there was no longer lojack productions we turned into lj productions okay and even at lj productions like i, f- I didn't think lj production was my thing no more because i started becoming more of a, a talent it, I, was, I was more of an mc djs there's a there's a dime a dozen in in, in, in society it's just crazy it's right DJs. especially in this area oh yeah yeah so um now we offer everything from the ground up from from using conrad concessions for their amazing stuff that they offer you know because we have the gateway we have the doorway to open up other opportunities of, of floors invitations limos photo, photography videography so we we offer everything we're a full and en- full-time entertainment company that offers you know bells and whistles so exactly what you need is there any one particular area or service that you enjoy doing more i mean do you truly like being in front of the microphone or, or do you like doing designs like do you like taking people's dreams and making them a reality you know is there anything that kind of is like in your little wheelhouse I like i like you just said that because i think that's one of those statements or that's one of those um slogans that everyone says uh taking someone's dreams and making it into reality i feel like that's what a client should say for us what are you saying uh what i think is that it's, some, it's something that's like a broken record and i'm like you know what Let's do something different. Let's literally create, reinvent the way people experience wedding entertainment or mitzvah entertainment, Sweet 16 entertainment. Let's grab little nuggets from a mitzvah perspective, such as a junk truck, Mm -hmm. and use it for a wedding. Why can't we have cell phone charging stations that we use for mitzvahs? Why not use it for a ceremony area for a wedding so everyone can leave their phones outside charged up cleaned and ready to go so they can use for the reception right. yeah. like this is the stuff that we've been doing so we're kind of event designing within the company within the event and not necessarily going into florists and things like that we offer that type of services with, with sharing other vendors but mm-hmm. that's kind of what we've been doing and we figured out you know what let's stop doing this whole cliche type of stuff where everyone does first dance and parent dance at the front let's hold off on that let's tear off the roof right from the beginning when it comes to introductions and then we do your first dance and parent dance you know mm-hmm. so we, we like changing the game a little bit for us um but we're doing event design in entertainment now in 2018 we, we decided to say, you know, hey, we found the niche. We have unique pieces. Our talents that we have here have a unique personality that's bringing in their own market. And they're expressing that that personality through social media and through whatever products that we have. And products, what I mean is like our chandelier DJ booth. Uh, our newest addition would be this piano DJ booth. We call it like the piano right now. Mm-hmm. I saw it earlier. I thought it was really, really cool. I didn't recognize it at first as what it was because mm-hmm. I was I was thinking something completely different. But then when I, it sounds like you're knocking it out of the park with you're innovative. If, if I had to come up with a word, because as I mentioned earlier, in this area in the New York metro area, DJs are a dime a dozen. You know, and to find one that is an outlier. Someone such as yourself. I had mentioned that you were uh, with DJ Times Magazine. Uh, DJ, DJ, D- you're correct. Three years in a row. You know that's not something that you get by accident. And unfortunately, you know we live in a we live in a society where people will price shop. And I had this conversation with your boy Rick earlier. A DJ, a photographer, those are areas, especially when you're getting married. Those are areas that you do not want to skimp on. Mm-hmm. And the solid reputation that you have here, which is important in this industry, as you know, trust. My question is, what qualities do you see in yourself that would label you as an outsider in this otherwise crowded industry? I feel comfortable saying that I am. I'm, 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 a, I'm a big risk taker. I, I take huge risk. I invest big time on things that I feel in my gut, in my heart, in my soul, in my blood, in my everything. Pelvic region? Yes. Yes, exactly. The genital area. If I feel it, 
the drive that I'm going to have to really conquer this risk that, I, that I'm finally taking on, um, you know, it's a challenge that I accept. So that's, that's kind of what I have. I mean, I think I learned to adjust the fear and turn that into fuel. So mm-hmm. if I'm afraid of something that may not work, I'm going to engineer it. I'm going to research. I'm going to study why I can't break this fucking wall. Why I can't, you mm-hmm. know, get this fear out of my system. But now it's just turned into fuel. So, I mean, heck, uh, we, we come up with some, a lot of creative, cool things. And it's like, you know what? Let's just dump money and try because you never know until you try, right? I agree. Is that how many times you fall down? It's how many times you pick yourself back up and try something new. Obviously, you're a, a gentleman that's very self-confident and truly believing in yourself. Is there anything that brings you anxiety? Yeah, it's it's I. There's a few things, but the one thing that really drives me nuts is uh, when I have to. Um, I consult a lot of guys, a lot of DJs, yeah. not just my crew. I got a lot of DJs out there, and and they're looking, they're they're out there reaching to connect with people that can can better guide them. Unfortunately, I get overwhelmed with a lot of DJ companies that are out there that are not helping their own crew. They're not helping their own team. In, are, in what sense? There's no leadership role <clears throat> in, in the business that we're in, meaning uh, there's a few DJ companies that I can definitely validate that do a great job coaching their crew to be more leaders, to um, you know, to not really bash other companies because... You don't, you know, even though this is the very, one of the most competitive industries that we are in, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, I, I, I get overwhelmed when I do hear a lot of DJs complaining and crying. Oh, well, the industry sucks. Oh, my market doesn't sell no more. My market died. This, well, this is an eighty billion dollar business, if not more, at this point. You know, mm-hmm. we're only getting a fraction of it. There's ways of connecting. Maybe a wedding market isn't yours. Maybe it's a birthday party. Why don't you re-strategize? If you're doing about the money then you're doing it for the wrong reasons you know i listen the stuff that we invest in we ain't making our money back anytime soon our attitude is like listen this stuff is going to bring in confidence it's going to open up doors of communication with clients once we start getting this attention with the crew our guys are going to know how to adjust to a new market that's coming in because these things are op- these 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 items that we have these random bougie shit that we have is actually opening up gateways to just connect with people and our guys are really inspired by that like wow well that's you know what that's it's interesting you say that just not as a uh, not as an entertainer but as a as a businessman you know as a as a as a CEO is your ability to adapt to draw on what you said earlier where people are bitching that like you know my industry is uh, dying or you know the, the the market is failing or whatever it's not that it's just they lack the ability to adapt to more modern times and be innovative at the same time you know breaking the glass ceilings you know breaking down the walls you've worked with a lot of high-end clients here at lj uh what are some uh well conrad is one of them (laughs) you know we had the opportunity to host in uh your day that was pretty awesome you know i gotta tell you you bonus points if you remember the month uh bonus points Three, two, one. I'm going to say October. Ding. You got it. All right. Yeah. So nice. I, I remember the weather. It was slightly a little chilly, getting a little chilly. It was the end of October. Yeah. End of October. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was cool. And uh, I got to give you props. I'm going to put a visual for your listeners out there. Um, this dude, Conrad, I mean. <laughs> oh, the, my girls are going to love this. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Your girl's a riot, though, this one. So I'll tell you this. She'll roast you even worse. But no, uh, Conrad is one of those guys that has the most driest humor. And but yet his delivery makes you pee in your pants because the, you know, you never know like his his facial expression and his jokes and his wittiness, you know I I love that about you you know I mean, but you know what those are nuggets that we get because you know without people like you in this world mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the stuff that we need to know we need to practice because we, we're going to meet with clients who are just like you. You know exactly yeah. like you, and if anything, and we have to read facial expressions whether whether Conrad doesn't smile or not. So we need to know if whether we're safe, you know, to make jokes and how to really open up communications with the clients. And um, but uh, no, dude, Conrad's a good dude, and the wedding was absolutely insane. I really enjoyed. It. I, th- I remember throwing you in the air. Uh, we, I think. We oh, I did up. the uh, I did the Jewish thing where uh, the Hora. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, I don't know the name for all of all the mitzvahs <laughs> I've done. I should know this by now. But um, you know, again, I'm, while I'm serving chocolate, I have the hearts of the mothers, and it's your job to get them on the dance floor. So, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. as I told him, the um, the analogy I used was uh, was a centipede. You know, all the legs got to be moving in the same direction. You know, sure. and uh, mm-hmm. you know, you just you hand them off to me. I you know I was voted a class clown in eighth grade. It's not <laughs> it's not so much 
what you say, it's how you say it. And the delivery, man. And the delivery. and I also there's a flip side to that. My best man at my wedding said that he's like Conrad, he's like, You have this weird ability to insult people with w- <laughs> yeah. with w- without them knowing it. Yeah. And yeah, there was that Hilarious. ability. But you know what? Look, you know, I'm in sales, you're in sales. It's it's about your delivery. You know, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, you do need to, the, the confidence to back everything up. And at the end of the day, you do need that product that's going to come through. But with, with deliveries, to, we're, yeah, we're, but we're, delivery is, is talk about celebrities like, or, or high end clients with the delivery. That's something that you need to know. Like you, you really need to have the confidence and security stating every little detail that you're painting with mm-hmm. your clients. Who are some celebrities or athletes that you've dealt with? Um, obviously you've done dealt, uh, Events with the uh, with the Trump, is that yeah, right? yeah. Trump's family. Uh, we do a lot of things with uh, his uh, his crew out there in uh, Bedminster. We've been with them for it'll be ten years uh, next year. Um, but we've been doing things with uh, his members, his family out there. So uh, cool people. I mean, I, I'm not trying to get political and all, but we knew him before he was even a president. And um, so you did gigs for him while he was president, uh, or was it before he decided to run? We did gigs while he was as while he was a president. While he still is a president, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was in Bedminster, meaning he had the three helicopters, he had the Secret Service there. Right. We had we had weddings, we had Sweet Sixteens, and he was there on premises. When he wasn't the president, he was there quite often. We were we were sh- we would bump hands and stuff like that, you know, fist bump and all that stuff. I, I got away with a lot of stuff with him, you know. I, I the people. Say I gotta ask uh, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. I'm, I was calling him DT. You know, I was just bugging out. Uh, you know, <laughs> you and DT were kicking it. Me, and DT were kicking it. Even at the, it, there's a pool area uh, right there that we. I would, you show you showed me a picture of uh, Baron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, diving into it, he was like ten feet away. I thought that was cool. This, yeah, he's 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 even a cool kid, man. He comes up and asks for a music request. Um, Arabella, this is Ivanka's uh, one of her kids. There, uh, we we know her. Like we do a lot of stuff with. Um, just a lot of games, a lot of a lot of great things that we had. Like I, I got no beef with, with Trump because it's like, um, uh, word advice that he shared with me was like, you know, you said Jack, you know, um, because he every every member there would talk about him, like you know, hey, word of, it's always about business, 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 business. Uh, I never, I didn't have to talk about business because I'm just a vendor. Um, I overheard it. What he said to me, he said, to, well, what he said to me, like kind of like sneaky, was like, you know, I'm not going to make you money, he says, but my members will, you know, and I didn't, I didn't really get that concept. Nine years ago, when he bought the the property of uh, mm-hmm. Bedminster, yeah. um, his members just kind of grew on me. His organization was actually feeding me a lot of work, and I had to correct a lot of stuff that I was doing wrong right from the beginning. Just from that little statement that he made, just yeah. that one statement. Yeah, uh, the way I, the way I was talking, the way I was uh, saying, yeah, nah, I gotcha. I, you know, and I'm coming from the streets, you know, yeah. so I didn't really know. You know, the, well, you weren't polished yet. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't. But I, that comes with experience. You know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But instantly you had to learn right from the beginning. You know, Well, coming from somebody like that, president or not, you know, somebody of that stature says something that you that's going to remain with you for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. And yeah, clearly yeah. it did. And you learn from that little sneakily uh, statement that he gave. His you. members even coached me on a lot of the things. You yeah. Know? I, I, just one quick story. I remember what, I did a, a party with 60 females and all different ages, usually from 30 on. And. There was an older lady, the one who contracted me. Uh, she says, say, say something to my girls to just kind of, you know, move them a little bit. I'm like, all right. So I only paced back and forth in my DJ booth, which was like maybe two steps left, two steps to the right. Like I'm going back and forth trying to think what I want to say on the microphone. And she literally came up to me squeezing the, my arm, the shit out of my arm. Forgive me. Mm-hmm. Don't walk back and forth. It looks like you don't give a fuck about my party. Wow. I was scarred at that point because she was right. Yeah. She was absolutely right. I was thinking of what I wanted to say. You didn't. You didn't come off as you didn't give a shit. It was just. It, the, from, the, it looked like you did. From but, that, the, but that's not how you felt. No, right from yeah. the distance and from the other side, these these ladies are probably waiting for something, and they just look at me pacing back and forth, like looking like I'm not like I'm playing soccer or something right. like that. Right. But I was actually thinking of what I wanted to say, but I was I did made it so obvious. It struck a big nerve, and that's the story I tell every one of my guys, even DJs, the stuff that, like, again, that, or the people who overwhelm me. It's like, listen, you got to take criticism. That's the stuff that's going to make you better at what you do. And mm-hmm. ever since then, heck, check one, two, one, two on the microphone. I got to make sure my guys are not on the phone. They're all standing up. They're not sitting down because people are looking at the check one, two, and three, you know, right. one, two, three, and all that stuff. So 
that was that and again that corrected me where i'm at and and, and again the members are pretty awesome they they expose me out there for their family and friends nice um but that's just one of them and we, we have a few other people out there uh Humor me with specifics, Jeff. Uh Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Chelsea Handler, her crew. That's pretty awesome. Really? Nice. Yeah, yeah. From Livingston, we did uh, all her nieces. Um, she lives. In, she lives in uh, Livingston. Or her family did, and now they're some of them are back in Cali now. So, okay. uh, oh, that would make sense. So, yeah. Shout out to Simone. I know she's hearing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, let's see. A lot of profiled um, CEOs and, and and hedge fund. Like those are the people that I get starstruck. Yeah, I get starstruck with a lot of those guys who who have. A few hundred, if not thousands, of people underneath their belt that that are giving them opportunity to work. You mm-hmm. know, I I get starstruck with those types of guys. You know, because I know they're not only just powerful, but they're very influential and they're responsible for a lot of people's you know life with 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 financially. You know, I like yeah. the business guys because uh-huh. you know why those guys are hard to impress. You know, because mm-hmm. like any celebrities or any like they they get things thrown at them. So who the fuck am I? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to throw anything. If anything, I could throw them is this brand new piano DJ booth. That's something that you haven't seen. I know that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, those are the hard guys to impress. It sounds so gay of me saying that. But yeah, you know, and if I can impress them with just the talents and the way I control his parties and the way I control, um, you know, his guests, that stuff is what really sets us apart because, you know, that guy's going to keep on spending money, keep on dumping money on you because, you know, he believes in your product. He believes in what you have to, to serve. How did you, let me th- turn the tables. How did you propose? Well, how did you meet your wife? How did you break the ice there? Oh God, uh, <laughs> it's it's like the listeners are dying to know this wittiness of you. Well, you know what? I want to I want to leave them well, a little bit at the end, but just a taste. You okay. know? I want to give them a taste. I want to mm, leave them hungry for more. Just the way I like my man. That's it, baby. <laughs> um, I had her. Um... We're getting delirious at this point. <laughs> it's like three a.m. No. Right. Oh, what a matter if it is. Uh, anyway, um, I had her friend do some reconnaissance work as far as like the type of ring that she wanted, because you know, you know how bitches are, right? Mm, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, I had her friend do recon work on what type of like you know what kind of setting she wanted and what kind of diamond, the shape, and all that bullshit. So she did research in that regard. She did a good job to her credit, and I got her exactly what she wanted. You gotta remember, we've been dating for about nine years at that point. Eight, nine years. That's how long we've been going out. Wow. Yeah, and we uh, just moved in together, so obviously that was the next move. She wasn't, now she wasn't on any roofies or anything like that when you asked her, right? Um, So this was legally, she was sober to to say yes. Let's glance over that question and move on to the next one. So, okay, gotcha. So, (laughs) so no, so I, um, I I bought a, uh, yeah, I think it was yeah, it was eight years, and um, I bought a uh, what the fuck do you call those things the uh, box uh-huh. that when you opened it, like the blue LED light shined down on it because I wanted to have my bases covered. If I had to ask her in a low light situation, look at you, <laughs> dude, you're engineering everything. So, That's pretty cool. Well, not really. It was nerve wracking. Actually, it's a, a good time to to ask you. Um, speaking of proposals, tell me about how about what you did. Just that that went viral. That went viral, yeah. yeah. Um, set, set, the, set the scene for my listeners because okay. they're, they're unfamiliar with it. Well, I've been uh, dating my girlfriend at the time uh, for about f- five, four or five years now, I think. Oh, shit. My wife's going to kill me. Um, we can edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> but I might I've been not. dating her for quite yeah. some time. No. Right. And uh, she's from Vegas, and uh, I brought her to Jersey, and uh, we, 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 we had a child together. And uh, at that time, my child was about a year and a half or so. That's Jack Jr. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my, my wife was saying, like, she needed some sort of security. Like, she wanted to make sure she was safe being in Jersey because we weren't married. We just had a child. We, we lived together. And, again, she left everything from Vegas to come here. So I was like, you know, no, babe, I'm going to marry you anyways. I'm, you know, what the fuck? You know, shit. Mm-hmm. Calm down. Keep cool, you know. Um, so what year was this? Uh, 2014. That's when I proposed to her, and how I proposed it was like you know I tried I wanted to do something very similar to what you did, mm-hmm. something different, something a little bit more uh, original, and we had a whole thing script. It's like it'd be funny if I proposed to her. She thinks she's going to a wedding, but actually it's the perfect setting to just throw a fake engagement, throw an engagement party, but it'll be a fake wedding. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, what does that mean, Jack? Okay, let me let me share it with you. I invited my friends and family, her family. I flew in from Vegas to come to this. A proposal and everyone knew they're playing their role that this is going to be a proposal mm-hmm. my wife knew we were going to go to one of my friend's wedding and it's not real mind you the cocktail hour was set 
We invited my clients. We invited some random people from the streets just to fill this room up of 80 people. Nice. We had fake centerpieces, fake seating arrangements. We we had a DJ. We had a band. Uh, well, not a band, but you know, my friend Crystal Vargas. We had a, a violinist. So the first hour we walk in, it's just cocktail hour. We have hidden microphones and, of course, mics. And uh, everyone's playing their role. Everyone's excited because they know this is going to be the proposal. This is it. Jack's finally taking the plunge. And mind you, my family was not there. My child wasn't there. But her family was in the other room watching what was happening. So the cocktail hour is completed. And there at that moment, that was the cue for everyone to leave her and I alone in the middle of the dance floor. And I was telling her, babe, this is it. There's no other. These, these are a bunch of actors or my friends and clients. She didn't get what was going on because I was going to get on my knees. And she was starting to hold me up. She was, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. No, babe, this is for us. I proposed at someone else's wedding to her eyes but when she turned around her family and friends were there and everyone's filming this and this was like kind of a really cool organic moment because this has never been done it probably took her a while for to register what's going on because it was so out of the norm right oh yeah, yeah yeah and 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 i'll tell you after that i mean it was just an it was just an engagement party the thing didn't cost me no art didn't cost me money at all it cost me maybe i'll be honest it cost me maybe three thousand dollars because it was just an engagement party right you know yeah but the concept of a wedding so um this thing went viral man it went viral within uh with yeah it went on elite daily went on people magazine it went on cosmopolitan it went everywhere and then you were on the real yeah, the real Steve Harvey wanted us. We wanted to get on island. Uh, That's we, cool. We turned down a few other companies just because I had different weddings. I was in LA, Los Angeles, doing a wedding, yeah. so I couldn't do anything like that. But the real took us on, and and the real flipped everything on us. Um, they kind of lied to us. They lied to my wife. They said like, "Listen, we're going to do a fake wedding. We're going to turn the tables on Jack because he threw a fake engagement. We're going to do a fake wedding." My wife winds up making me sign this agreement. We go out there and we go to Los Angeles um, on the real. And uh, they, they interview me quickly, you know, really brief. And then, of course, sure enough, don't you, don't, don't you want to see your wife? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And she's in a white dress. And guess what? Guess what, Jack? You're getting married now. I'm like, what They the dropped f-? it on you like that. Just like that. Wow. And, I, and then they asked me, I think uh, one of the twins, Tamara, I think it is. She, she says, what's going through your mind? <laughs> my fucking person. I was like... Um, I want to talk to my lawyer, you know, <laughs> but I'm like, I, I like, I couldn't play my family out because yeah. I see my child up there. I'm like, I go, I want to get married now. <laughs> With Come the, on, the plastic smile. Oh and... my goodness, I was looking for the nearest exit sign at that point, but um, <laughs> but it was like we got married on TV, and 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 of course, as soon as we got married, um, my wife's like, don't worry, this is fake, but no two officiants come out. It's like we don't do nothing fake here. This is real. It's like what the fuck are you talking about? I got no prenup. I got nothing. We got to. This is this can't be real. This was this, that hired by the by the real or by the producers? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. The producer actually who did make my wife sign, she actually quit that week. So there's like no there, validation. There was, no, there was nothing. In she for had her. a yeah, lie. She, she had nothing to lose. Oh my gosh, she quit, and that's that's why like the stuff is like we got screwed. But I guess the funniest thing about this whole process was like what we did after the wedding. We went across the street where there's this pizza place, and literally that's what we had for 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 dinner: pizza. Nice. Across from Warner Brothers Studios. Thanks, the real. You're the best. <laughs> Shout out to the real. Shout out to the girls of the real. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. ironic. You got a pizza place that's like right next door. Here. Oh my yeah. god, we eat that shit all the time. So every time you eat pizza, is that like a reminder of that day? The fucking real. <laughs> <laughs> the real. Oh man, that's an awesome story, though. That's awesome. Well, are you happily married? I am actually happily married. You yeah. uh, you're looking to convert? Because I'm kind of in between. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, these mics are really magnificent, so I don't know. I'm cl- I'm, I'm kind of turned on just just talking right now. Mm. Are you crossing your legs to conceal your erection? <laughs> no, it's, it's out there, man. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> All right, man, man. Um, I think we can wrap it up here. Is there Excellent. um is there anything that you would like to add, or is there any advice that you would like to give? Yeah, I do encourage. Uh, all new clientele and uh, anyone who's you know recently engaged to don't jump at the sweetest uh pitches that that's kind of like a part where you know you become a little bit vulnerable and and, and in this industry that we're in i mean i'm, I'm not i'm not sh- i'm not sharing anything no secret here it's like you know djs are willing to say listen we got a savings we got a package here for xyz you're gonna get this 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 but you got a book now 
it's fucking bullshit, man. Yeah. It's one person that's going to host your event. They have that option available anytime for you. Mm-hmm. So just do your job diligently. Do your research. Check out videos. Check out their social media. Make sure they're updated. Make sure their content really makes sense. And um, the person that you are sitting down with is actually going to deliver exactly what Mr. Conrad stated from the beginning. Bringing your vision into reality. Mm-hmm. And it has to be concrete. All right, you heard it here. Jack Equadorable Bermeo. <laughs> That's good. Uh, That's a good ring to it. DJ Times Magazine, DJ of the Year, three times over. Jack, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. You knocked it out of the park. No, man, thank you, you, you for having the, me. You are the best. No, man, you're, you're, you're the greatest, though. No, you're the greatest. No, you're the no, I like the way your mind works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Good night, I, folks. All right, everyone, I think that should do it for this episode of Victory Loves Company. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions or suggestions for upcoming shows, please email us at thevictorypodcast at gmail.com. And as always, please check us out on our social media handles at VLC Podcast. And I'll talk at you next Monday.